Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how you can make your movie stand out. Without a doubt, there are hundreds, thousands of content released like everywhere, every single day. So many different things are taking people's attention away from your film. So I wanted to help you make your film stand out and make someone click on your film instead of clicking on another TikTok or another video. This actually comes down to some very fundamental principles. And what you wanna do is make sure your film is original without compromising the story, right? You don't wanna do the same thing that everyone else has done. You also wanna keep your story true to yourself. You know, you're not making a story for the sake of being original. So number one tip I wanna talk about is actually watching and consuming a lot of other people's stuff. If you've seen like, you know, 2000 different movies or tons of different other art, you know what's out there, you know what, you know what's been made. And that gives you an idea of what hasn't been made yet. And I know a lot of people talk about, you know, you want to steal like an artist, right? And that is true to an extent, but you also want to make sure you make something that is not ever seen by the world before and i think that's very possible i think there's an infinite amount of stuff that has been made so all you gotta do is come up with it right and that is hard but it pays off really big and that's why people with the most original movies companies business ideas that's why they succeed than people who simply just copy this brings to my next point which is story right so i read this really great article the other day by jim cummings and essentially he talks about finding stories that moves you finding the story that shows the humanity and to be able to do this you have to you know read a lot of books talk to a lot of people experience life that's how you make the most original stuff because you know your experiences are unique to yourself right obviously people have similar experiences but your story is something that only you can tell and to create the most original stories i think it takes a lot of you know hard work you got to keep doing it over and over again because you get better every time you do it and you also got to make sure you kind of be curious about everything in life question everything and just kind of learn about everything that you see. And you don't have to be an extremely talented screenwriter to come up with an original story. I think there's a deeply rooted original story within everyone. You just gotta kind of find it yourself. It takes a lot of like just being by yourself and just contemplating, kind of just thinking about life and all the ways people live. A lot of times you just gotta look inward to find the spark that gives you this story. Next thing I wanna talk about are settings. So the location of your film, I'm a huge advocate for finding the most unique locations a lot of times honestly locations could even be the spark that gives you this original story why do i say locations right because a lot of people film in the same places so if you can find a really interesting location to film in and have an original story you're going to be better than honestly 90 percent of the stuff that you can find online so kind of like go explore the world around you kind of think of what locations you can incorporate into your story without it being pointless. And an easy thing to find these great locations is honestly just think about the films you've seen, right? So after you watch a ton of movies, think about all the locations in these movies and then think about what locations really haven't been shown in most of these movies. For example, a desert, right? I know some movies, you know, have deserts in them, but I think it's pretty uncommon, you know, for a film to feature a desert, right? Or let's say a cave or a golf course, right? Centering your stories around these interesting locations could spark, I think, a ton of originality that can totally make your film stand out. Another thing I wanna talk about are your characters. Writing these very complex, interesting characters are such an easy way to make your story original. An easy exercise you can do to help you come up with these interesting characters are to basically picture two people who would pretty much never be in a room together, who would never talk to each other, and then put them in a situation together. Or, you know, create some irony, right? Let's say like a police officer's father who basically can't police his own son again his son is like a drug dealer or a priest and someone that does like bad things right it's like i don't know it's just putting these very polar opposite people together and building a story out of it i think it's a very fun exercise to come up with some really original and never seen before films for example in my film i put a depressed male escort with a disfigured narcissist serial killer and i think 
I mean, I've never seen that in a film before. So I was just like, well, what would their interaction be like? What would they do to each other? So definitely think of these interesting different characters. And a huge thing with this is you got to know what's interesting like of a character by living life, kind of just observing the people around you, seeing what's interesting to you, reading about different people in different periods in history and seeing the stuff that they do that interests you and think make you think that they are someone worth making a film about. And that's why, you know, a lot of really good films are about interesting people like Oppenheimer, right? So you just gotta find someone that has a really unique story that's worth telling. And it could be even, you know, non-fiction kind of stories like retelling a real person's actual life with that person. A good example is like the writer, right? So if you can find someone in your community that you find very interesting and you wanna make a story based on their real life, then totally go for it, right? So just kinda explore. And I think all these fundamental ideas I talk about in this video is just broadening your creative input, like broadening your consumption of other works of life and of just deepening your thinking about these different ideas. And the next few things I'm gonna be talking about are more practical. So number one is sound. I think sound is so important. So have, you know, a sound mixer, have a sound designer. I think sound is honestly more important than the visuals. I mean, you hear this a lot, but it's really true once you actually start making your own movies. And I heard from someone who got their film into Sundance, and he told me that two things Sundance look for. Number one is an original story, which we talked about earlier. And number two, it's good sound quality. So make sure you learn sound design. I actually did sound design for one of my films recently and I learned a lot. So if you can't find someone else to do sound design for you, just be your own sound designer, right? It's actually really fun, you know, putting all the sound effects together, adding the background noise. You kind of build a new world outside of what it is shown visually. And it's actually really interesting. Like, to layer all the different things on top of each other, you know, dialogue, background sounds, folly, all that stuff. It's really fun. Make sure you're using some good monitors, right? To monitor the sound, have headphones or really nice speakers to really understand what it sounds like. And I think it could be very helpful. But what's after sound? It's cinematography. I think cinematography is something that kind of separates the more professional films than the student film. I mean, one, obviously they have more gear, more crew, better cameras, but I don't think you have to really necessarily think about that stuff. I think what you need to focus on is basically finding talented people who can bring your vision to life. And if you're your own cinematographer, then kind of learn the basics and fundamentals of lighting because lighting is more important than anything else. This depth in cinematography, I think it's what separates these films. It's not really the quality of the camera. Some of these more professional films look so good, not because they have really expensive cameras, it's because they know how to use these gear. You know, if you gave them a way less budget, it's still gonna look really good because they have the skills needed to create these beautiful images. And to go with cinematography, make sure you have good color grading, right? Find a colorist or learn DaVinci Resolve yourself. And I think that could bring your cinematography to the next level. All right, next thing I wanna talk about are the title and your log line. So this is basically what the festival sees. And when you submit to these festivals, you wanna have a good title or not even just festivals. If you wanna put on YouTube or Vimeo, the viewers, they're gonna see this thumbnail and then they're gonna see the title, right? So make sure you find a title that fits your story, right? And I can make a video on how to come up with great movie titles. It is very hard, I totally get it, to come up with something interesting. So I can make a separate video on that. But just kinda keep in mind that your title, for a short film, it's probably better to keep it short. Make sure it's not too ambiguous what it means. Make sure it's not too overused. It's just because it's, then it's harder to stand out if your title is the same as like a thousand other titles. Like if you title it The House or something, you know. And the logline, right? The logline, I can make a separate video on that too, but making sure it's concise and it shows the characters and their goal and the conflict. And that's how you build that logline, right? And you know, sometimes it can be even more vague than that, right? As long as the characters are interesting. And I think a lot of this stuff I talk about in this video, you improve by just doing it more and more. The 
more reps you get in, the more easy it is for you to actually do it. So just keep working on it, keep making more and more films. So to recap, number one, you gotta make sure you have a broad knowledge of other films and artworks to have a good database of what has been made so you know what hasn't been made. Next thing you wanna do is have an original unique story that tells the truth about humanity that is something that you've never seen told. And number three is finding interesting locations that help your story, you know, bring it to the next level. Number four is having great characters, interesting characters, characters that wouldn't be in the same room, be in the same room together, or people you find in your community, very interesting and have their stories worth telling. And then the practical ones are making sure you have good sound quality, good sound design in your films, and then have good cinematography, use lighting to create this depth, and then also making sure you have a good, very concise title and a good log line that tells the reader why they should be clicking on the film. Honestly, let me just throw in a bonus tip, making sure you have a good thumbnail or poster. And I think a way to do that is kind of using the human's face because people are kind of attracted to other people's faces, right? So then find like a still frame in your film of the character's face and show their emotions. And I think that's a strong way to make a good thumbnail for your film. But now that you know what makes an original short film and you know the fundamentals of making your movie stand out, then check out this video right here of how to get into film festivals. I'll see you guys there. Peace out.